Philippines was claimed in the name of Spain in 1521 by Ferdinand Magellan, a Portuguese explorer sailing for Spain, who named the islands after Philip of Asturias, later to become King Philip II of Spain. They were then called Las Islas Filipinas. Let's be completely clear here. Ferdinand Magellan did not discover the Philippines. He merely landed on its shores, contrary to what Yoyo Ibillame told in one of his signature songs. Let's listen to this. March 16, 1521 When Philippines was discovered by Magellan They were sailing The truth is, prior to Magellan's arrival in the archipelago in 1521 people had already populated nearly all corners of the islands. I made a video about it and if you missed it, you can still catch up with the lesson by clicking the link that would pop up anytime on the right hand corner and also on the description box below. Hi, this is Rene with Arlong Bangma Media and the Light Media and we're going to give you a glimpse of the rise and fall of Ferdinand Magellan, his historic journey to circumnavigate the globe, and the story behind the Battle of Mactan, who took his life exactly 501 years ago. Simple? Right. But think of it. How do you on your channel? Ferdinand Magellan was a Portuguese explorer who is credited with masterminding the first expedition to circumnavigate the world. An experienced seaman, Magellan approached King Manuel of Portugal to seek his support for a westward voyage to the Spice Island. But the king refused his petition repeatedly. In 1517, a frustrated Magellan renounced his Portuguese nationality and relocated to Spain to seek royal support for his venture. Just 18 years old at that time, King Charles I granted his support to Magellan, who in turn promised the young king that his westward sea voyage will bring immeasurable riches to Spain. He was made the captain of the Spanish Armada and commissioned to trade routes to Spice Islands in today's Indonesia, where spices grew and gems to be found, only a few hundred miles away from the Philippines. He left Spain in 1519 with a fleet of five ships and about 260 men, including a young Malay slave, Enrique, who was captured by Magellan in his previous journey, and Antonio Pigafetta, a Venetian explorer and nobleman seeking adventure. From Spain, he sailed around South America, discovering the Strait of Magellan and across the Pacific. Magellan and his expedition were the first Europeans to reach the Philippines. I believe that these were more appropriate terms rather than the word discover the Philippines. Out of his fleet of five ships, only three remaining ships arrived in Homonon Island, known today as Summer, on March 16, 1521. Enrique, the young slave, proved to be useful to the journey. To the crew's surprise, Enrique could understand and speak the indigenous people's language. With Magellan's Malay slave acting as translator, they sailed on through the Philippines in Cebu. Magellan was warmly welcomed by the local ruler, Raha Mabon, who agreed to be baptized to Christian and swore allegiance to the king of Spain. Magellan named the islands afterwards to Isla San Lazaro, erected across 
and swiftly claimed the Philippines on Spain's behalf. The islands were later named Las Islas Filipinas, translated as the Philippine Islands, in honor of King Philip II of Spain. The first Catholic Mass was celebrated along the shores as what was referred to in the journals of Antonio Pigafetta as Masawa or Limasawa on March 31, 1521 by the Spanish friar Father Pedro Villarama which marked the birth of Roman Catholicism in the country. Among those present were King from Masawa, Raja Tulampo, and the King of Butuan, his brother Raja Siawi who forged a blood compact with Magellan. Father Villarama baptized the two Rajas and the 400 natives on April 14 in Cebu where Magellan erected a huge cross, the famous Magellan's Cross. On April 26, 1521, Datu Zula, a local chieftain from Mactan, sent to Magellan one of his sons with two goats as present. Sula, who had promised his service to the king of Spain was opposed by another local chief, Datu Lapu-Lapu. Who is Lapu-Lapu? Philippine society regards him as the first Filipino hero because of his resistance to imperial Spanish colonization. During Humabon's reign, the harbors of Subbu became known colloquially as Sinibuyang Himpit, translated as to trade, which the modern name Cebu originates. This was the period in which Lapu-Lapu, as Lapu-Lapu Dumantag, was first recorded as arriving from Borneo, or the Saba Island. He asked Humabon for a place to settle, and the king offered him the region of Mandawili, now Mandawe, including the island of Opong, hoping that Lapu-Lapu's people would cultivate the land. They were successful in this, and the influx in farm produce from Mandawili enriched the trade port of Subbu further. The relationship between Lapu-Lapu and Humabon later deteriorated when Lapu-Lapu turned to piracy. He began raiding merchant ships passing the islands of Opom, affecting trade in Subbu. The island thus earned the name Manghatang, later evolving to Mactan. Going back, Dato Lapu-Lapu declared that Mactan would never submit to the Spanish king. Already angered by Lapu-Lapu's obstinacy, Magellan was persuaded to send his men to help Zula defeat Lapu-Lapu. Magellan wanted to personally teach Lapu-Lapu a lesson and became embroiled in rivalry between the two local chieftains. Little did he know that this adventure would be his last. They crossed Mactan with 60 men in boats. Although the Europeans had superior weapons and armors, they were massively outnumbered. Oh. Am I giving details too advanced here? Well, according to Pigafetta's accounts, during the Battle of Mactan, Magellan and 60 of his troop members, we can call them conquistadores, were up against Lapu-Lapu and his, uh uh, hold your breath, 1,500 warriors. After landing on the shores of Mactan, he swiftly set fire, burning a village beside Mactan. Now, it can be told that Lapu-Lapu the valiant chieftain who led his men to fight the Spaniards on April 27, 1521 might have held a grudge or anger to the abusive foreigners for burning the village of Bulaia for unknown reasons. After burning the enemy village, Magellan's force was overwhelmed and were pinned down by attacks from three directions. The warriors were armed with swords, shimitars, and arrow-tip bamboo spears. Magellan and his men were driven back in the shallow waters, and the natives' bamboo spears ended the captain's life as they tried to reach their boats. The former allies of Cebu turned to Magellan's crew, butchering 30 of them in an ambush. The survivors fled. The battle was considered the first Filipino resistance against foreign invaders and Lapu-Lapu was sailed a hero. Magellan was credited with leading the first expedition that proved that the world is round by sailing from west to east. Though he was killed in the Philippines, one of his ships continued westward to Spain, accomplishing the first circumnavigation on Earth. The voyage was successfully terminated by Basque navigator Juan Sebastián Elcano. 
Pigafetta's work, First Voyage Around the World, in 1519 to 1522 is important not only as a source of information about the voyage itself, but also includes an early Western description of the people and languages of the Philippines. With the help of the humble Malay slave Enrique of Malacca, Pigafetta compiled the world's first phrase book of native languages. After Ferdinand Magellan, five more Spanish expeditions followed between 1525 and 1542, but all failed until the expedition of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi in 1564, leading to the colonization of the Philippines for 333 years. That would be our featured presentation on our third episode entitled The Dawn of Colonial Empires. Only here on your information channel. Again, this is Rene and as always, peace.